Okay guys, this is uh, West Seattle. Uh, so, I'll take a little bit of video here. On a, This is a bike trail, asphalt. Uh, black asphalt, so it's very smooth. And you can see how the bike, ri how the bike rides. Uh, it just finished raining, so I turned the phone back on. Um, so I'm riding the Kenda 16 by 1.75 and the model number is K50 tire. That's got one of the three times thickness inner tubes. It's supposed to be explosion proof or at least resist, resist punctures by explosion. Uh, Mount Black Tire has very good traction in the, the wet uh, rain and in, uh, on asphalt. I just rode it through some sand. I uh, have a little bit of video of the sand ride. Um, I'm now using the stock seat battery as the using the stock seat battery as uh, the uh, hoverboard battery ran out of juice. Um, so you get a little bit of view of Seattle here. Look for the people who uh, are watching this from, say, Europe or other parts of the country. So, coming up on some other bikers here, look, these little kids have bigger wheels than I do. Looks like they got like 26 inch wheels, <laughs> the little kids. So, we'll show some video actually of the hill climb. I got some pretty good hill climbs coming up. It's just for fun. So, what else can I say? Um, so, the hover battery worked for 7.3 miles and then it cut out. So, I think I might have killed it, like as it drained it to zero. It just. Uh, voltage dropped to zero pretty quickly, like catastrophically, from the standpoint of it was at 36 or 37 volts and then went down to zero volts or shut off. Uh, or actually probably went below the cutoff voltage because I can't turn the bike back on now with the uh, hoverboard battery. So hopefully the battery's okay, we'll check when we get back. Those batteries are pretty cheap, they're about 50 bucks each. And uh, I got 7.3 miles, but a lot of that was downhill, so I would say you know, you're going to get five miles per hoverboard battery. Carry a couple extra of those in your pack. I think they weigh about, I don't know, uh, a kilogram each. So 2.2 pounds each, and you're going to get an extra five miles. So I think you can carry two of those. You get 10 mile extra range uh, on top of the seven amp hour battery, which will go maybe 12 to 15 miles. So you probably got can make 25 miles, you know, and that's real, real world miles, not theoretical miles. So I just let this run. I know it probably might be boring for some people, but you can fast forward it to the end if you want. Okay. If anything, you get to see Seattle a little bit. Oh, okay, I'm gonna do a curb hop. Oh, okay. There goes the foam tire on the curb, no problem. So what else? I'm liking this, having the air inner tube tire on the rear with the mountain bike tire, because it's more comfortable under my uh, bum and there's better traction. And the front tire being uh, foam filled and a little bit harder and a street tire with less traction, uh, it doesn't really matter as much being on the front because you're not driving, it's not the drivetrain. It's not where the motor is or, uh, you know, or you're, uh, you're pedaling the, the chain to the rear wheel, it's on the front wheel. So, okay, well, what are we doing? We're, doing, we're in pedal assist three and we're going 26 kilometers an hour. That's according to the display on the one. Um, according to my uh, Garmin GPS, I'm going 10 to 11 miles per hour. There's a little bit of off-road. Okay, here we'll do a little bit of grass here, so you can see what that's like. A little bit of grass. So, right now we're on concrete pretty well. Okay, we're going to go on grass here. And this is the rear tire. Okay, look at that grass. Wet grass just rained. So that rear tires and the drivetrain is doing pretty well on the wet grass. I mean, you might skid out a bit because the front tire doesn't have much traction, but you know, I'm moving along. 22 kilometers an hour on wet grass. It's pretty good. Just a little bit of view of Seattle. Come down on the wet grass. Okay, wet concrete. 
The traction's good on that. That beeping was my GPS. It warning me about a steep road. <laughs> Okay, so back on the uh, trail here, or the bike trail, hard concrete. So pedal assist three, very easy pedaling, not really contributing anything to the bike other than maybe maintaining a little bit of the speed. 25 kilometers an hour, 12.6 miles per hour according to the GPS. We've got 37 volts left and that's used one bar of the six bars of battery charge indicator so we're just gonna pedal nice I pretty pedal well, like nice and smooth you know pretty fast rate I don't like cadences I could put a cadence meter on it it's pretty fast though I would say it's like maybe 67 rpm 60 or 70 rpm oh here's a puddle Okay. So what are my impressions of the one? Well, okay, I like the folding mechanism. It folds up very easily and smoothly. It's a quick folder. And uh, the design is really good of the folding mechanism. Uh, it folds up small. You can stick it in a suitcase. Very convenient for uh, city driving if you're going to commute on the train, you know, or on the subway. Fold it up. Easy to carry on to the subway. Small footprint. Uh, fits in a suitcase. It fits in a large suitcase. You can take it on the airplane. Weighs about. 33 pounds without the suitcase with the suitcase that I have with another 10 pounds so 43 pounds put some uh, other bike tools and gear in there you're under the 50 pound TSA limit or the airline limit uh, for checked baggage so you don't have to pay an oversized baggage fee or an overweight baggage fee okay what else about the one okay build quality Build quality is not great. I mean, it's not horrible, but this is not a premium bike. This is a cheap Chinese bike with cheap components. The frame is great, uh, but they give you uh, budget Chow Yang tires. Uh, they replaced the promised uh, Shimano hydraulic brakes with nut brakes. Uh, <laughs> that's N U T T, nut brakes. A Chinese brand. I mean, the brakes do well enough, but you can tell that they're budget. They're not as good as Shimano. The rotors are cheap. The metal is like not machined well or not finished well. They're very thin rotors. I mean, they do work, but aesthetically, you can tell that they're cheap rotors. Um, what else is sort of like substandard on this bike? Uh, the kickstand is a piece of plastic that doesn't really work that well. It's uh, too flexible and the angle uh, that you have to have the kickstand at is uh, pretty uh, almost vertical. <laughs> There's not much angle to it, so the bike will tend to fall over very easily. So you got to be careful with the kickstand. Fenders. Okay, the fenders are cheap plastic. They're probably going to break on you. Um, mine have not broken yet, but I have heard, heard or read other comments of uh, owners who have said the fenders have broken on them. Uh, however, the fenders do work. Um, I find they work well enough to deflect dirt and uh, wet spray away from your body so you're not going to get spray on, on your clothes, uh, which is important. What else? Battery. Uh, the seat post battery, I don't see how it's waterproof. I think I've made some comments on that. Uh, none of the ports are really sealed well. There's a little rubber like cover for the charge port. Um, that's not really waterproof. You need a gasket or an O-ring. Uh, I took apart the battery a little bit, enough to see inside. I didn't see any potting compound. 
uh, at the top of the seat of the battery where this where the bike seat fits on water could get in there uh, it's just a metal fit there's no rubber gasket now it's a tight fit so you might be okay that being said I'm riding in the rain right now or in uh, kind of drizzle the bike has been okay I was a little bit concerned about that <laughs> that I might fry something because of the water but hey then's a risky take you know it's this is a real world bike you got to ride it in the real world not just sit it in your house okay so my hills coming up soon so you can see what the hill climbing is like this is a pretty steep hill in Seattle and one of the main reasons uh, to get an electric bike is for hills like on flats anybody can go fast it's the hills which kind of kill you so this is the Avalon Way Hill in Seattle this is one of my hill tests. It's not the steepest one in Seattle, but it's pretty steep. It's probably about 10 degrees. Okay. Okay, we're going to light. Ah, uh, waiting here. No cars coming, I'm gonna cross. Okay, look, there's a down jump bike in Seattle. <laughs> We're not taking those bikes, this is way better. Okay, here's my hill. Hill says three, 24 kilometers an hour. 11.6 miles an hour. And we're at 35 volts, is what it's saying. It went down to three bars of, of charge left. Riding on the sidewalk, because it's safer uh, in terms of cars. So there's a bunch of bumps. So I felt those on the front wheel. The rear wheel is nice and soft because it's got the air in it. So I'm not sure if you get a picture of this hill. It's slow grind. Starts off probably three or four degrees, and maybe gets up to about eight to ten degrees. Okay, a little bit steeper here. 35 volts is the seat post battery pack voltage. Three bars of charge, 21 kilometers an hour. And I've gone 3.5 miles since I turned on the seat post battery. Okay. Now let's avoid this car. It got in my way. Okay, so here you can see the hill steeper. A bunch of other cars in the bike lane here, but a little bit worried about that door. Just gotta be careful. Snowboarders. Okay, so 22 kilometers an hour, 34 volts. You can see I'm still having to pedal and it pedal assist three. It's still a little bit of a workout. So it's not entirely easy. I'm contributing a bit to it, obviously. So I'm maintaining 20 kilometers an hour here. Twenty three kilometers an hour. 34.8 volts. Okay, there's a sweet street cleaner. I'm gonna get off the bike lane, go on the sidewalk. So 
So I'll display showing two bars of volt, or two bars of uh, charge left, 34.3 volts, 21 kilometers an hour. And local traffic only there. Okay, I'm gonna. This detour up here. Okay, we're gonna stop the video for now. We'll start it up later again if we can.